Hi, I'm Eileen Roach from Designs and Machine Embroidery, and thanks for joining me here today. It is National Embroidery Month, and I'm excited to share one of embroidery's specialty techniques that's popular with all ages and all styles of embroidery, and that is puffy foam. Puffy foam you see mainly, you know, or first thought in sportswear. Think Callaway golf club heads or hats, Nike shoes, um, tote bags, tennis racket covers, you name it. But it's also great on wearables. Hello, Judy Warren. Aloha in Hawaii. Hope you're having a great day there. Thanks for joining us. Um, you know, as you think of different projects to use a puffy foam on, you should really expand, you know, your opportunities and consider not only clothing, but also tote bags, um, handbags, and quilt blocks, believe it or not, can really benefit from some added texture and dimension, right? Because puffy foam is all about dimension. It adds lift to embroidery. There are some secrets that you should keep in mind so that you have success when you stitch puffy foam. Number one, use an embroidery foam. Craft foam that's available in craft stores is not appropriate for embroidery. As you stitch it, it'll look okay, but as you use the garment and try to launder it or dry clean it, you'll have disastrous results because those products are not heat resistant. As we're embroidery foam, we'll enjoy a very long life with normal wear and tear and normal care. So that's a great reason, probably the best reason to use an embroidery foam. So, wow, we have a lot of folks joining us here. So I'd like to know, have you ever tried puffy foam? And just give me a yes or a no so we can see um, if you've had this experience or not of trying it out. Because, it, it, you know, it's some people are intimidated by it. It looks difficult, but boy, is it easy to do. So if you just kind of give me a yes or a no, so I know how many of you have tried it. And Carol, you're anxious to see this technique. Well, you're going to be surprised how easy it is. Hi, Mary Ellen Bronson. Nice to see you here. So what projects have you tried it on? Have you done tote bags or, you know, maybe a sh the tongue of a shoe? That's a great place to put it. Um, you know, just let's see, Paula, you did it and you weren't real happy with it. So I'd be interested to know why you weren't happy, but let's get through the technique that I'm going to share with you. And then you can maybe uh, tell us, you know, what are the challenges that you experienced when you did it? So number one, you're going to use an embroidery puffy foam, not a craft foam. It makes all the difference in the world. And you're, you will match your thread to the color of the foam. Now we sell a, a pack of 10 sheets of multiple colors. So you get white, black, green, red, blue, orange, you know, you name it. And you get 10 different sheets and they're nine by 12 inches, which is a lot because, you know, Puffy foam is used um, in small, small sections of an embroidery design. You don't normally fill like a whole jacket back. Occasionally you can, but it's rather rare, rather rare. So let's see, Patsy, you went to embroidery club this morning at your local quilt shop and they were demonstrating the puffy foam. How about that? See, it's National Embroidery Month. So people are thinking about specialty techniques. So let's head over to camera two so I can show you some great samples. And some of them are from my good friend, Deborah Jones. So let's see what she has shared with us today. Number one, she has this adorable t-shirt that and, and when you think about a t-shirt, this is a very lightweight garment, and yet this is quite wearable. So we have four, one, two, three, four columns of satin stitches, all different widths, but they underneath is the puffy foam. And you, she has beautiful coverage. It's all about the coverage. So you need to use a design that was digitized specifically for puffy foam because it's going to give it a nice tight tension. I mean, density, not tension, density. So those stitches are tack, stacked up right on top of each other. When you select a designer, if you're creating your own, all of these other elements are stitched before the puffy foam because you don't want to have to pull away the puffy in the hoop. That's something you do out of the hoop. 
So let's look at a couple of her other samples. She also has this monogram hat that is it actually has a halo with what they call an outline of a contrasting color. Now she has a white thread on this light pink. So the, it doesn't contrast too much, but it most certainly contrast with the pink puffy foam. And that makes it look beautiful. I have another sample of that halo look um, that I wanna share with you. And here is uh, one that you can really see. So here, my first color is that orange satin stitch and that creates the border. And then the blue puffy foam was added and that's really dense. I mean, it's really lifted, it's quite lofty, lots of fun, I like that. So some other um, projects that I did, it's a couple designs that I created. First, I did this Argyle design that has uh, blue diamonds and then red diamonds on top. And I just stitched this all in satin. Then I added puffy to that red element. And boy, that really makes it pop. If you can, the difference between the two, know it, I know it's hard to uh, see that on camera, but boy, in person, that's a really great way to add um, puffy to a simple design. It's a large design, but yet the puffy element is fairly small. Deborah's hat has these adorable floral and paisley open designs and all of them feature puffy foam all the way across the this uh, cap. Now what I love about this is that the satin stitches are quite narrow where they meet the center of the design and then they widen. That really lets the puffy elevate and keep its loft. You'll notice that puffy is very um, beautiful in both curvy and swirly designs as it is in straight geometric designs. And of course, lettering is widely popular in a puffy. That's what you see. Lots of sportswear logos in is the lettering. I had some fun with uh, a beehive design that I created, kind of a honeycomb, and then added a lace bumblebee. So my first color is just plain satin, and then my gold is uh, the puffy foam. And then I have one here in progress that I thought I would share with you the process of removing it. So of course, this is already out of the hoop, correct? So I just start to peel away. And you know, this is a little addictive. It's kind of like playing with bubble wrap where you just can't stop pulling all those little pieces apart. And aren't they adorable? The little pieces that remain, remain. I imagine children and grandchildren could have some fun with these little pieces and find some fun projects to do. So sometimes you will have uh, little bits of foam peeking through the satin stitches. And Deborah Jones tells me that you should use a hairdryer, literally the kind that you use in the beauty salon. You just turn that on and give it a good shot of heat. And I'm not going to do that for a long time here, but that will allow the puffy foam to shrink back up behind those satin stitches and it gives a really lovely finish. Uh, I did a little wreath candle mat where I just took a a circle of hearts and just applied them all the way around this small circular shape and then pull them out. Isn't that fun? Now I would hit that with that blow dryer and here are all these little candy hearts. Aren't they adorable? Oh my goodness. Okay. So this design comes when, with the package of puffy foam. So if you purchase that package, you get this as a free download with the instructions. It comes in multiple formats. So just in time for Valentine's Day, I'm sure you could find a lot of uses for that. I love how these two hearts are separated. That really allows that loft to just elevate off of this felt fabric that I used. So that's an awful lot of fun, isn't it? it is, let's see, Jeff Chandler says, this is awesome. It is awesome. I know, I really love it. Guess what? I found another use for puffy foam that you are really gonna love. So I took two pieces of puffy foam and cut them the actual same size as the interior of my monster hoop. And then when I am working on a project, an in the hoop project where I have to add something on the back, 
and maybe press on the back. I just have this puffy foam inside and now I can press and apply the fabric to the wrong side of the hoop for an in the hoop project. And I don't have to worry about harming, you know, the project that's on the right side of the hoop. So you may find that's super easy to do. And our sheets are 10 by 12 inches. And if you cut them perfectly in half and round those corners, that is the inside of your five by seven hoop. So that's a fun way. I'm gonna keep this on my ironing board so that I always have it handy when I am stitching. So I'm gonna head back over to the main screen and answer your questions. And maybe even show you some techniques in our software on how to do that. So what stabilizer should you use? Well, Isabel, you should use a stabilizer that's appropriate for the base fabric. So whatever, you know, if you're using a knit and you want to use a, um, a um, cutaway stabilizer, that's fine. You could use a tearaway. Just know that you're going to have a tremendous amount of needle penetrations. That's the whole key to success of the puffy foam. The design has been digitized so that the density is really tight. So if you're going to use a tearaway, it is going to tear away. So you know, cutaway may be your best uh, bet often. Yeah, and Sue, it does look amazing on that shirt. Do we have to put matching thread on the bobbin? No, you don't need matching thread on the bobbin because it's just a regular embroidery design and your top thread will be pulled to the wrong side of the embroidery. So your bobbin thread will not come to the top. Mm -hmm. Let's see, uh, does it have to be a design just for puffy foam? Um, yeah, it really should be a design just for puffy foam. You could stretch, you know, um, the technique in the sense that instead of using a 40 weight thread, you could use a 30 weight thread so you get more coverage. But it's best if you use a design that was uh, digitized for puffy. And Jeff, you want to know 7511 needle? Yeah, or an 8012, you know, somewhere in the middle of those two very common sizes. And Sue, you love the B. I love the B too. That's one of my favorite designs in my lace charm pack. And hi, Pam from West Virginia. So let's see, what other questions did I want to ask? Um, so tell me, what have you done with puffy foam? Have you ever done a quilt block or a garment or a jacket back? I mean, I often think of um, a varsity jacket, you know, not the traditional kind, but that style where you put a lot of patches on it and maybe a big saying on the back, and that would look really great in um, puffy foam for sure. So we're going to um, switch now to software so I can show you in Perfect Embroidery Pro how I have made that um, some of those designs. I'm going to show you how I did the Argyle. Okay. It was super easy to do. So I have to do something here, don't I? Am I all set? I am. I'm all set. Okay, great. Thanks. <laughs> all right. So, oh, okay. So here is um, my Argyle. This is the finished design. I'm going to show you how I started. I went to my tool, artwork tool and I drew a diamond. And I'll tell you what size that is. It is one and a half by 260. And then I took that diamond and went to the repeat tool. No, let's just back up. We'll just cancel out of that. And first thing I did was convert it to a steel. So that's my satin stitch. And now I'm going to repeat that four times across and two repeats down. Click apply and okay. And then I will, this comes in as a, as a whole unit and I'm going to copy and paste one of the diamonds and I'm going to convert that now to puffy foam. So in order for me to do this, I'm just right clicking and selecting convert to puffy stitch. And you can see now it is beefed up, right? And if you look over the density, it's quite dense, it's 0.28. So now I'll change the color of that diamond and go to the repeat tool. And now I want four across and one down, click apply and okay. And I'll group that. And I'll also group my first set. So I'm grouping them separately. And the reason why I do that is when I select them all, I can then use the alignment tool to align them center and Boom, there it is. How easy was that? Isn't that great? 
it's so easy to digitize in this software because we have Puffy as a setting in here. You can digitize any line as Puffy Stitch. You can transform a regular design that was digitized in C2S into um, a, a puffy, puffy Stitch. And of course, we also have fonts. I mean, let, let me show you the Puffy fonts that we have. So we'll go to a new folder and we'll just open up text. And in our fold, font folder of se selecting all the different fonts, I can scroll down till we come to the P's and I have all of these different fonts. So let's get a look at what they look like. So you can see right on screen. And my puppies are, where are my puppies? Here we go. All of our puffy fonts in Perfect Embroidery Pro are, have a halo, meaning they all have an outline. So you'll see an athletic puff, puffy, some traditional aerial brush, chaos, some Greek letters, lots of fun, you know, lots of choices for puffy foam in there. So any questions before I share some of the February doors with you? Because I know that will be um, exciting. I know you all wanna see what is happening with um, the doors. Any... Judy, do you have PEP? Are you using PEP? I'd love to know how many of you are using it because it is super fun. So let's uh, switch applications and go over to our PowerPoint. And I have to do that, right, Kayla? Okay, so you just bear with me a minute. I have to switch my applications. I'm gonna stop sharing and then come back in and share the screen again. And share. Oh no, that's wrong. Oh gosh, bear with me. It's embarrassing. Share the screen and application. There we go. Okay. And now here's our February door. We've had lots of people are um, jumping on board and really enjoying the uh, February, January, and February door. So we have, um, and Sherry, you're almost finished. Well, you're gonna be really inspired by some of these doors that I'm about to share. Of course, this one is the one that I did, but then we've had Cindy Pricer added hers. I thought she did a great job on um, her mailbox, really pops off that red fabric. That was a challenge, selecting the thread to make sure that the mailbox popped away from the cabin fabric. And Luann did a beautiful job. Look at her address on top of the arch door, 1629. I know you use software to do that, Luann. That's beautiful, very well done. And then our sew abilities educator, she, that's, I recognize that little heart and the word love on the door. That's from Kimberbell, Kimberbell's beautiful lace collection that's available. But take a look at Sydney Watson. It's kind of a busy photo, but if you look at her heart on her door, I'm going to zoom in so you can take a better look at that. It is a photo of some precious little child that I'm sure is dear to her heart. How great is that? Isn't that adorable? Very, very creative. And Sue Brown, she just mentioned that she's doing a sew along with the February door um, on Saturday over at OML Embroidery. So you can go check that out. One of our educators, Ayn McCarthy, did a beautiful job on her door, the one on the left, that's Ayn McCarthy. And I love the fabric that you chose for your door. The tiny little pattern is just perfect for that scale, really lovely. And then Cynthia Hodgkin, talk about fabric selection. That brick, the scale of that brick is perfect. If I didn't know better, I would think maybe you painted that because it is just spot on, very nicely done. And then Candy Bray, this is truly creative. So she took her she took her embroidery design, copy, pasted, mirror imaged it, and put that together and stitched it as like a row house, a townhouse, you know, or a city cityscape scene. She only put the skis on the one side and left them off on the other. She changed her fabrics on the door while her outline 
Um, you know, one is red and the other is a gray, but isn't that creative? I really love that idea. I bet we'll see more of that coming. And of course you could do that in any size hoop. If you remember, I told you that we have free sizing software on our website, which is embroidery tool shed uh, over at DZGNS. You can download that. You can resize these doors in any size you want. I mean, you know, within reason, because you will lose detail. It'll be full stitches, but imagine that lamp, uh, the light fixture, if that were blown up to a five inch design, it really wouldn't have enough detail, would it, right? So you just, you know, always use caution because an artist digitizes at a specific size and the detail in that size will be the most beautiful. Uh, and that's their intention for that artist. So you do have the freedom to do it, but you may not always like the result. Okay, very well done, love that. Rose Gully, look how fun this is. Her, she added a snowman, this is her January door. So she added a snowman. She probably lives somewhere where they have snow all year. But I love the cardinal that she put in the tree. Isn't that adorable? Really very creative. And her wreath has a ribbon swirling all the way around. And then Lee Jane, she also added a, a large wreath, which looks really fun. I love those light green leaves and uh, the little berries in white looks very nice. And interesting fabrics that she added. Very, very well done. Oh, I guess that's our last one. So aren't they fun though, those doors? And I'm having fun working on March. I can just tell you, you know, um, I can't wait to stitch it. I'm actually at home this weekend. I've had a lot of travel this past month, but I've been digitizing them, but this weekend I'm going to sew it out. So, you know, first step, right? You have to stitch and design, you know, test one and probably two, three times until I nail it the way I really like it. Mm -hmm. So let's see, Pam, how much does the PEP software cost? Well, you're going to get your best deal for a PEP software at a local retailer and probably at an event because we discount it deeply at an inspirations event. I'm not really at liberty to tell you the price because uh, it's currently it's only sold in bricks and mortar stores. So they set their price. We give them a suggested price, but you know they they will um, price it as they see fit. Uh, I can tell you, you know, you should look at embroidery software as an investment in your hobby, unlike a machine that will have to be. Um, repaired and maintained and so forth. Software doesn't have to do that. Once you buy your software, you own it for life. And all of our software at Dime is updated for life for free. So if you purchase Perfect Embroidery Pro one time, you will not have to purchase it again. We will not come out with another version that is um, better than or different than PEP, the original because uh, what we do is we come out with a whole new module that has interesting techniques that aren't, you know, true digital, aren't the full digitizing package. Like we have some quilting modules and we have our lace module. But if you're serious about embroidery or if you have a small hoop and don't intend on buying a big machine, then software is truly your right investment because if you have software, you can do anything in a smaller hoop, five by seven, four by four, because it's all about making it work, learning how to split designs, merge designs, learning how to do continuous embroidery, and software is the key to give you the tools for that. I've used this embroidery software for do I have to say it out loud? 25 years. Oh my gosh. I really had dark hair then. But anyway, that was before I'm bl I was blonde or gray or whatever you want to call it. But it's uh, I couldn't get my embroidery skills up to speed or where they are today without embroidery software. So don't be afraid. And frankly, start with a free program like the embroidery tool shed that's on our website. Get your feet wet in there and get comfortable with it. And then you'll know when it's time to upgrade, you know, to, when I say upgrade, to, to get a full package, to purchase a software program that allows you to do all the things you want to do. And, you know, the number one reason why people buy an embroidery machine is for lettering. And if you want professional lettering, the only way you can get it is in a software program. So, okay, I'll get off my soapbox about software, but you know, I'm in it every day. I open up Outlook and I open up PEP and that's where I work all day long. Email and digitizing software and a little bit of Word because, um, you know, I'm writing a lot.
So I hope that you get an opportunity to head out to some of our events. We have a uh, quiltique next week on the 13th and 14th in Vegas, and I'm gonna be there. I'm excited to share Lisa Knight. So we'll be talking all about software for sure. And if you come, you, you'll get to play with our, um, our tools and our hoops and placement tools, all kinds of stuff. That same weekend, Tina Bartle Bartlemay is going to be in Colorado Springs at Meyer Sewing doing a hooping clinic, which is a terrific event to go to, especially if you're a newbie to our system of embroidery, because that's where you learn how to how you do a placement and hooping and use all of our tools. So that's an awful lot of fun. Also um, in Idaho, Sewing and Vac Center in Boise, Ashley Jones will be heading there to do lace. And later in the month, Tina Bartlemé will be heading to Paula's Fine Fabrics. I think the week before, actually February 22nd, 20, 21st, 22nd, she's, uh, Tina also is gonna be at Ruthie's in Baker, Florida, up in the you know panhandle of Florida. So lots of fun going on at Dime for sure. And we love getting out on the road and meeting embroiderers, but you know, I most certainly am enjoying Facebook Live. And next week it, we're gonna do Facebook Live one o'clock from Quiltique. So cross your fingers that I can handle that all by myself because I won't have my you know, right-hand woman, Kayla Gilchrist with me because she'll be here in the office and I'll be out there. But I think we can handle it, right? We're gonna try our very best. Let's see, when is Dime coming to Chicago? That's a good question, Susan. I'll have to look that up and get that posted on our blog. I don't have that, um, I don't know that we have a, an upcoming event in Chicago. We're often in Wisconsin. So maybe that will be the closest that we get to you. Um, but anyway, well, thanks so much for sharing uh, your time with me today. I appreciate it. And I'm looking forward to seeing you from Vegas next week on February 13th.